What's up, SD Racing family? Today in the diamond, we have a 2003 Evo 8 with cams and a bigger turbo. Alright, so this customer brought us his uh, Evo 8 for a tune after he installed a set of GSC S2 cams, uh, FP Red Turbo with the stainless steel housing set of ID 1300cc uh, injectors, 340 liter power fuel pump. Um, he's also got uh, I think it's a ATS front mount intercooler kit. Uh, he's got a downpipe, not sure what brand, and a Tomei titanium cat back exhaust. Uh, so when he came, um, brought the car in, um, he had, as he's got a towel cube ball five on it, does recirculate, but with the cams, the performance we're gonna get out of the car, um, the potential to blow off intercooler pipes. We made a decision to go ahead and switch to carbon speed density. Uh, so we got a, a GMIT sensor as well as an Omni 4 bar map sensor to go ahead and do that conversion. So the car is no longer running on MAF, just strictly off of the speed density. So if he blows an intercooler pipe off, he won't be stranded on the highway uh, like with the MAF sensor. So uh, again, GSCS 2s corresponding valve train, uh, FP Red with the stainless steel housing, full bolt-on, so we expect some good things out of this car. So. We're going to get started here uh, uh, shortly and uh, see what we can get out of it. That was a little interesting. So having a little bit of a time with the boost controller. We've played with a little bit here and there uh, already on a couple pulls trying to get it dialed in. Not really sure what spring he has in the gate on this car, but it uh, seems like very, very small changes are making uh, big changes in boost pressure. So that was a little over our target on what we look for torque. Uh, this is a stock bottom end car. So we're looking for no more than 380, 400 foot pounds of torque maximum on our dyno. Uh, we made 422 foot-pounds of torque and a little a little over 500 horsepower. So uh, let me get the graph here set up. So we're going to play. 
played the boost control a little bit, trying to bring that down and uh, get us back to our uh, nice, safe target uh, for this car uh, on a stock block. So uh, we'll let the car cool down for a little bit and do another pull here shortly. It's the second day of tuning now. Um, we weren't able to finish the car up last night. The, so we're using a, it's a manual boost controller with the FP stainless uh, exhaust housing and it looks like an MA Performance um, exhaust manifold uh, again. So, so very, very small changes on this boost controller are making big, big changes on boost pressure. So again, we're trying to keep boost pressure down to, to control torque, uh, trying to keep it between 380 and 400 foot pounds of torque to keep the stock engine happy. Um, so boost was delayed a little bit. We still ended up getting 26 pounds peak, which is what we got on the last run uh, after looking at the logs. And we're still making just a little over 500 horsepower and 422 foot pounds of torque. So we're gonna do another tweak on the boost controller. I'll show you the graph here uh, as I get it set up. So this little spot here is where, for some reason, a boost controller is just really lazy coming here and it kind of plateaus and then uh, we get the torque to come in. Uh, so this may just be a symptom of the setup as a whole. Again, it's a manual boost controller, not an electronic, so I don't, you know, I'm turning the knob as opposed to actually putting targets uh, in the computer to go ahead and, you know, get my desired boost, boost pressure. So gonna have to turn the boost controller down a little bit it's probably gonna make that uh, that bump uh, in the graph a little bit more pronounced uh, but again we're trying to control torque here with the stock engine so we're gonna let it cool down and do another pull here shortly
All right, so that pull is a little bit better. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. We got the boost pressure down to, I think, 25 pounds peak is what I saw uh, while the car was logging. Made 501, 414, so we're still going to try and bring it down a little bit. Uh, I'm going to drop boost pressure just a touch again and uh, pull a little bit of timing out at uh, peak torque and see if that, uh, that helps us out. But here is a look at the graph as I set it up. Like I said, this little um, little dip here is just with, with the spring that's in the wastegate, uh, with the manual boost controller, uh, it, it's going to be, is, it is what it is. Uh, I don't think there's much I can do to make it up with uh, ignition time and air fuel ratio. Um, again, that's, that's a mechanical thing we may recommend at a later date to uh, make a spring change, uh, possibly a heavier spring, so we don't get that dip and that, that loss there as it comes in, because you can see again. We get that little wall there and then it really starts to come on once uh, pressure gets put back down on top of the gate. So, so we're going to do a small tweak on boost pressure again, uh, pull a little bit of timing out at peak torque, uh, again trying to get that between 380 and 400 to keep the stock engine happy uh, because it has, I think it was 119,000 miles on, a, on the stock engine it's a 2003 Evo 8. So want to keep it safe after he uh, you know, invested the money in the cams and uh, the other parts on the car. So we're going to let it cool down, make a change, do another pull. Well, even with dropping a boost pressure, um, there's not really much more of a change I can make on it because if I adjust the boost controller down even just a touch, it basically runs wastegate pressure or close to it. I think the spring. Um, was about 10-ish, 11 pounds, I think, when we were first uh, first started doing testing, um, and make it up to 15. But even just the smallest tweak down from here uh, is going to result in just just no boost pressure at all. So it's still hitting about 25 pounds. We did pull one degree of timing out uh, at peak torque, uh, and we still ended up making because weather got a little bit better. Um, still made 503 horse, 414 torque. So let's take a look at the graph. So again, the little dip here is just it's mechanical with the with the wastegate. Um, so we've got it set up to where uh, we've got reference on both the top and bottom, uh, boost reference going to the bottom, and then we're putting pressure down on top of the gate uh, to control boost pressure. Uh, as we find that's the most efficient way, even with um, the spring we have in the spring that he has in there right now, 
and what we're doing. If we were just at a bottom port, I think we'd have more, way more problems than what we have right now. I think it's just too light of a spring to be able to control real well, especially with manual boost controller as opposed to an electronic one. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to stop here. Uh, we're just going to suggest that a customer doing a spring change uh, up into spring, probably to, I'd say either 18 or 20 pound spring would, would get us in the realm of uh, safe torque on the car uh, with the boost controller and then small changes up from there to get us back in line. Ultimately, I think with it hitting 20, 25 uh, and a half, almost 26 pounds, at 414 torque, I think if we were able to get about 24 uh, pounds, uh, 23 to 24, that would get us in a, a much safer realm uh, for the stock clock. Again, 119,000 miles. We try to be between 380 and 400 foot pounds of torque on our dyno uh, with these engines. Um, anything more than that consistently, you're going to bend, bend rods. So again, we're going we're gonna, to uh, Suggest a spring change. Uh, so we're gonna pull it off the 902. We're gonna take it down the road and uh, make sure our fuel trims are good for uh, cruise and light throttle. Uh, we can't. That's something we can't do here on the dyno with these with these cars. Uh, the older ECUs that take about four minutes to um, adjust to make changes to long-term fuel trims. So we just don't have enough airflow over the car to run it on the dyno that long for a long period of time to double check. So we'll end up taking it down the highway um, here locally just logging it while we're going and making changes there so we can really dial in that portion but you know, for right now we're gonna have to stop again 503 horse 414 torque um, so it's it's on the upper you know it's above the limit just slightly but it's still relatively safe there's no knock nothing bad uh, so you know we'll see what the customer wants to do but in the meantime if you like the video please give us a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please think about doing so. And we hope you have a good one. We'll see you again soon. Been a little too nice for y'all. Now I got to up price for y'all. Snake eyes on dice for y'all. Shoulders on ice for y'all.